Yo, what up? My name is Don, and today we're going to be checking out the seventh track off Lead From Within's album, Era. This one is called I Am Oblivion Part 2, which suggests that there is an I Am Oblivion Part 1, which is actually a song that's off their third studio album, Uprising. So while I found no music video or guitar playthrough for this song, I can't wait to listen to it, so let's hop right in. This is a sick acoustic intro. Absolutely unexpected. I love how it sounds so... You know, okay. <laughs> I possess with intent. Long sleep came to life. Six old kids escape up to this place. No. Dude, holy crap, dude. Yo, we're already there. Dude, my body feels frozen. As I embrace this Oh my god, dude, look at my arms. Dude, look at my arm. Look at my other arm, bro. What is going on? This is sick, like disgustingly sick. Oh, dude, shut up, man. I don't know what to say, bro. I'm disgusted. Oh my god, man. I, I can't even headbang to this, bro. This is way too sick. Oh my god. Uh, dude, I still have mad goosebumps. I still have mad goosebumps over my, over my, like, dude. Is that it? That was the song? Oh my lord word, bro. What in the hell was that? Oh my goodness. That's part two? Like, that's part two? Damn, dude. How many albums were, were between the first song and this one? Album three and, and this one. Like, what in the hell, bro? I don't... I, I feel bad. Like I wasn't able to react. I was literally like stunned. I'm just shocked at how sickly sick, nasty that is. I don't even, what the hell? What the hell? Let's get back into it. I, I'll try to share, share some thoughts. I'm blown, I'm blown away. Like I'm blown away. 
first of all, I liked how the, I was going to say it, the acoustic guitar in the beginning is so down tuned that you can hear that bit of um, um, string buzz. And I feel like it adds a lot to the song. The guitar feels very, I don't know why I feel like I would hear it in a, you know, dingy, old school Western, like, like Southwestern or something like, you know, a cowboy, but like in the Bayou, like crocodiles, you know, you know what I mean? Like I just, this feels so, I don't even know. It feels so Pantera influenced and dank and sludgy and groovy and evil. Like that one part of it, just that kind of with that line here. Dun, 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 dun. Just that whole kind of ascending, you know, bit is very. Dude, I just. It's like I was in such shock. I don't even remember hearing this part of him whispering the first time around. Huge chorus. Huge chorus. They make uh, Stephen's voice sound so epic. Like, not even like singing in a cathedral. Singing in like, you know, some monolithic you know, building made for the gods or something. It just, it just sounds like his voice is echoing through the halls of eternity, man. This <laughs> is so sick. Like, this feels like the song after the aftermath of some chaotically destructive, insane, world-clashing battle. Yeah. I mean, I can kind of understand the chords they're playing. I just, it's the... I don't know, it sounds so like cat-like. It sounds so congruently, everything's just, oh, I don't know. Something so juicy and gnarly about that sound. Yes, and then they just chop it up with that groove. Then there's that big ascending, huge setup. This feels like it needs to be played insanely loud, like not loud in headphones, like I mean loud so you can feel the song. You know, the songs, I've always believed this and said this, the songs that you really love, when you can turn them up so you can feel, because obviously, you know, music like a lot of other other art forms is just it's energy, right? And being that music is literally vibrations, like there's nothing more that, um, there's like almost nothing more epic than enjoying music to the level where you can feel it, you know? That's, I think that's a big part of the reason why shows are so amazing. And, uh, I wish more venues realize it's not just about being loud, it's about having the right dynamic soundscape. So like you can feel the bass, you can feel the mids, you can feel the highs, but they're not shrill and they're not tearing up your ears, you know what I mean? I think a lot of venues fail at that and a lot of live experiences fail at that, to be completely honest. Because like a venue is made to look pretty, not really like benefit the band's sound or anything or, 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 or the, the type of music that they play, right? So some, some bands and some artists get you know, luck out and sound better in certain venues. And, you know, that comes down to, to how attentive, I guess, the, the builders and the venue is, the, you know, the, the planners and everything are to um, building a, um, an area that where the audible experience is going to be um, the most important thing rather than just, oh, this is a nice bar and this is pretty over here. You know what I mean? Like, um, back to the song, it's a, a shorter song. It's still, it's still, uh, just two seconds under four minutes long. It's three minutes and 58 seconds long. Um, I don't know why it feels so short. I, I guess it's just because I sat here flabbergasted about how insanely um, epic it is. You know, those that ascending chorus section is huge. Uh, Steven sounds huge. Scott's killing it as always. The, the rhythm and groove sections are just the filthiest thing ever. 
Um, the drums are smashing your chest in all the time, and the bass just sounds thick and monstrous throughout. Like, once again, another absolute banger from Bleed From Within. Uh, as always, I want a music video for every single song, and I want guitar playthroughs, drum playthroughs, everything playthrough, even, even, even just solo vocals. I want to see Scott in a studio setting, just doing vocals while you hear the rest of the song, but it's like the mix is for the vocals, right? Just, just like it is in their guitar playthroughs or their live uh, playthroughs when you're hearing one specific instrument. So I know uh, Rory Doherty <laughs> is their front of house at their shows. Um, but again, if he's the one that does the mixing on the albums or if he even worked with them back in, you know, when Era came out, um, I would still like some playthroughs. I, I don't I don't even care what anyone else says. I would still like some playthroughs of, of older um, music because it's, you know, it's still... It's clearly always been amazing. I think it's wrong for me to say it's still amazing. Of course it's amazing. It came out amazing. It's, it, yes, it's amazing. I think it's amazing, right? So I would love to know your thoughts on this track, I Am Oblivion Part 2. And we'll have to go back and listen to I Am Oblivion Part 1 uh, eventually off the Uprising album. As always, though, um, if you like content like this, if you like reactions, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.